Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 2 of We the Revolution. It's day 2 of Act 1 and we have another day of work ahead of us, with, which begins by, with a letter of King Louis the Sixteenth. So, today the people of Paris commemorate Jacques-Guillaume Simonot, mayor of Etamps. He was lynched by a furious mob for performing his duties to France. This march shall symbolize the unity of our society and the hope that the most violent stage of the revolution has passed us. Let us make sure that no other loyal servant of France becomes a victim of such hatred ever again. Oh, so a mob killed the mayor. Okay, so... Let's go. Hello, Raymond. Simonot was a good, loyal officer. Those bastards lynched him for observing the law. Will you join me at the march? Oh, no. It's going to be a politi political. My mentor says that he obeys the law. So I guess as a judge, I should make a statement. Although the revolutionists hate me, maybe as judge I shouldn't make a statement. Because I shouldn't pick sides. No, I'm not going to join. The revolutionists hate me already. I am more interested in the living, even though I do agree that Simoneau's death was horrible. I wonder why the king has taken the trouble to show up. Louis XVI is marching arm in arm with the people of Paris. That is unexpected. King Louis? Wow, it's the king himself. Continue, please. I am merely an observer. Do not change your habits for me. I heard a thing or two about a young and ambitious judge of the tribunal. I was curious whether he's guided by justice or by hmm, entertainment, as some would say. I'm very bad with doing voices, I just realized. Whoa, the king is watching us. Okay, so I just gained three more influence points because of a new day. So what's, let's take a look at the hierarchy first. A judge of the Revolutionary Tribunal, generally considered a drunkard and gambler, a protege of Raymond de Voyer, who introduced him to the role of law and relations. In the private, he is an unremarkable character. I don't know all of these people. So, okay. Well then, <sighs> the revolutionaries want him to be locked up, the common folk want him to be free. I guess now the king is in our... Mm, okay, well, let's see. let's read the case file. The defendant is Olivier Mugle, a 65-year-old master locksmith who is famed among Parisian burglars as an expert on unopenable locks. Last month, he was commissioned by the owners of a Parisian glassworks, Jean Roux, Louis Roux and Ferdinand Celan, to construct locks for ornate chests for valuables, presumably, presumably as gifts for their wives. The craftsman praised his latest creation as thief-proof. Shortly following their completion, the industrialists' houses were hit by a series of burglaries committed by a recent newcomer to Paris, Hector Vian. The thief from Orléans was caught in the act and shot by Ferdinand Celan. An expensive Turgot map of Paris with the houses of the recently robbed industrialists marked on it was found on the deceased. Surprisingly, Salon had given Mugler an, an identical map as advanced payment. This deposit was in addition to the, agreement, to the agreed remuneration from all the employers. Further interesting information came from the owner of the Ginger Market Inn. She recalled that on the night preceding the burglary, the locksmith met there with a man she didn't recognize. Based on her description, we were able to identify him as the aforementioned Hector Vian. The man allegedly engaged in an evening of drinking sponsored by Mugler. Evidence a map of Paris found on Hector Vian. So, okay, so the accused is this guy who's a locksmith who was ordered to make some ornate chests with lo to construct some locks for chests which three people gave to their wives three men gave to their wives who were all robbed after that with what looked like a copy of a map that one of the guys gave to Mugler in advance this sounds pretty too easy doesn't it well, let's unlock the questions. So, the accusation is... I guess the accusation would be the series of burglaries. 
So the evidence should be the marks on the map, I suppose. I suppose the evidence is the marks on the map. The accusation is, I suppose, the series of burglaries. Let's put this together. Hmm, I suppose the, exten the extenuating circumstances could be the drunken evening. Because he was drunk and he could have given away something or something like that. Or that he is a master locksmith and he knows what he's doing. But I don't think that those are extenuating circumstances. I think the drunken evening is... Oh, no, it's not. Well, then I guess the drunken evening belongs to the course of events. Yeah, the... okay. So, this could still be linked to evidence. No, okay, I guess the map of Paris is the evidence. Yes. So, I wonder what the extenuating circumstances are. That a famous thief did it? That he constructed the logs? That he's a master locksmith? So, wait. What is there else to do? So I guess the offender's personality could be the master could be the master locksmith, right? Yes, that's it. But that's still possible to go somewhere else, right? It seems. So the lock construction is probably something that goes into the course of events. Yes. Now it does is now this is gone. Famous thief is probably evidence i guess it's part of the evidence that it's that it's this guy and the master okay i'm just gonna try to do to put it on the extenuating circumstances i don't really understand it but it's true right and i think i'm gonna put the famous thief to the evidence yes that's it so what do we have here oh some news in this city, only the dead are free of addiction. What do you care about people's idle gossip? Oh well. Okay, I didn't put an end, put an end to the gossip, so everyone knows now, and everyone dislikes me a little bit more. Guess that wasn't too good. I guess if it got out that I threatened that I threatened people into silence, it's not good for the reputation either. So, I got all my questions. Let's just ask, start asking. Robbing the bourgeoisie is no crime. Okay. According to the case file, you're a citizen Olivier Mugler, is that correct? Indeed it is, Monsieur Le Judge. May I have a request? I would like to sit down. I'm an old man, you see. Basic respect for the judiciary requires that you remain standing. Do the names Solan, Rude and Rue mean anything to you? Why are you so determined to harass an old man? They sound like the names of my debtors. Debtors? They are the victims of activities you conducted. You mean locksmithing? So... I am not sure. I don't know. This all just seems so easy, right? Okay, let's just go with this one first. Though I think I want to ask all the questions. I don't know. Well, let's just go with this. Do you recognize this map? No, I don't recall ever seeing it before. What? Ferdinand Salan claims that he gave you this map as advance payment for your services. He claims what? That wicked wretch of a second-rate merchant. He gave me a scrap of paper as payment for making three locks and says it's supposed to be worth more than the 3,000 fr francs he owes me. An honest laborer is being judged while frauds remain at large. So this case definitely fires up the viewers, the spectators. Silence! So this map does belong to you? It doesn't. So where is that? So where is the map that you received from Citizen Salon? I lost it, but it wasn't even worth a loaf of bread, so I surely won't shed a tear. But if you have it, maybe you stole it from me. You'd better make a note that Olivier Mugler demands remuneration from Rude, Rue and Salon. 
Okay, so he claims that he got another map from him. There's something wrong with this. How much did you charge for your services? 3,000 francs. Tidy sum, that is. If you were a master locksmith, you'd charge that much too. That is quite a substantial fee. Indeed, that's how much it costs to have a high-quality locks made by a master with nearly 50 years of experience, and those bastards never paid me a single franc. The victims did not pay you the agreed amount. Not a franc. I'd bet that money right out of them, but I'm too old for that. I'd beat that money right out of them, but I'm too old for that. So the guys didn't pay. So they... Oh, did they not want to pay and just set this up to... I don't know, get out of their debt. So wait a second. Hector Vian was Hector Vian was the master thief, right? So he just said that he doesn't have a map. That he didn't have the map, right? I think I wanna ask him about Hector Vian. Did you know Hector Vian before? This is the first time I've heard the name. That is interesting, as you were seen draining several bottles of wine together at the Ginger Market Inn. Is that a crime? No, but the question is why are you denying it now? Was your drinking spree just a deception for discussing the burglary? Nobody I had a drink with introduced himself as Hector. I didn't plan any heist with a Hector, Victor or Hugo. I'm a locksmith and I earn good money from it. Burglaries are for vagrants without a job. So, okay. This just sounds like a setup. Rumor has it that you are one of the best locksmiths in Paris. I should deny it for modesty's sake, but I will not. That cannot be true, though, as a random thief from Orléans was easily able to open your locks. Well, then he must have been one of the best thieves in Orléans. Let's be serious, Monsieur Le Judge. Every lock can be picked with the right talents, even my locks. Okay. Did you tell Hector Vian how to open the locks in the victim's trunks? I understand what you're implying, but consider this. If he sold the secret of my locks, then my business would be over. Word spreads fast among thieves. That is true. I mean, it also is true. Why would he send someone, even if he wanted the money back, and even if he wanted to conspire and, and steal the money back or something, and so why would he hire someone to pick his own locks? I mean, that's his job. He's supposed to be this master locksmith with un pickable locks that he advertises so it would be s i don't know if someone just goes and why would he hire someone to pick those locks that he sold as in unpickable that doesn't really make any sense so did you give hector beyond the map with the victim's houses marked on it i gave nothing to achilles hector or any other greek call in the witness citizen jean rude Jean Rude in the flesh. You will not speak unless called upon. Naturally, of course. What went missing during the burglary? My house was the first one to be robbed, and in my case it was mostly valuables. At Rue's house, he will not say it himself, and I do not want to go to prison. It was the letters he had exchanged over the year with King Louis. Damn, monarchist! Salan did not lose a thing. He shot that vermin in the act. That is what he said. What happened to the items he had stolen? That still remains unknown. According to Salan, Hector had nothing with him. Ferdinand suspects he had hidden the other valuables somewhere. He hid the other items before robbing the last house. Strange. That is strange. Is it possible that he didn't steal anything because he was hired by the guys? Advanced payment in the form of a map, its disappearance, the murder of a burglar, and a lack of payment for services. I'm just gonna... Oh, I'm just gonna go with this. You look upset. What are you afraid of? Monsieur le judge, the crowd behind me, and you know... Know what? I do not want to go to prison, and Salon said that if I were to talk nonsense in court, I would be sentenced to a few years. Is that true? Citizen Ferdinand Salon instructed you on what to testify? No. Well, he might have offered some suggestions on how not to get into trouble by speaking gibberish. I am a rather nervous person and I sometimes struggle to make sense. Mm -hmm. 
A fool more than a witness. That's our bourgeoisie. You were commissioned by the victims to make chest locks. Who installed them? It was me, naturally, and all in agreement with the contract. My job was to prepare and install the locks, and the employer was only to come and see whether the work was completed. And pay, of course. Was the installation carried out at your workshop? No, on site, at the client's property. None of those idlers bothered to deliver the trunks to my workshop, so I had to strain my old legs. Does that mean you knew the addresses of the victims? How else would I get there, blindfolded and on a wagon? Oh no. I guess this is going into the wrong direction, but can I just stop questioning? Ah. Aww, he invites us to dinner. Oh, our son is cute. Tonight I'm definitely going home. <laughs> okay. I think I have to ask him that, right? Or can I question someone else? I think I have to. Were you the one who marked the addresses of the three victims on the map? I didn't mark anything. The house of your clients are marked on the map. I don't know who marked them. Maybe you should ask the person you found the map on. Maybe the court made the marks and has no memory of doing so. Do you not think there are too many coincidences in your story? You obtain the map but lose it and then it is found on a thief who has robbed your clients. I know nothing of coincidences. I only make locks. No, I... I think I'm done, right? The jury votes in favor for quitting the defendant. They find him innocent. Yeah, I find him innocent too, but... The common folk will love me, though. Risk of being removed from office, risk of death. Well, I think so far I've been judging really fair, but no, I can't put this man to prison. He's done nothing wrong. This is hard. No, I don't want to die. I I want I don't want to die, but I don't want to send him to prison. He's free to go. I'm almost dying. So I guess the next case must be toward the revolutionaries. <sighs> the verdict for citizen Olivier Mugler is not guilty. Lead the defendant away. Bravo, Mugler! Away with the bourgeoisie! To be honest, this does bear the marks of social justice. They would not pay him, so he had them robbed. There is balance here. No, I don't think he did it. Why would he do it? Why would he do it like this? Why would he send someone to pick their locks? Oh, I lost some reputation again. Or is this a... Uh. Well, the common folk likes me now, I guess, so... But now I'm going home and I'm going to spend some time with my family. King Louis the Sixteenth. There were people who truly loved him. He reminded the French they had noble ancestors. Do not be manipulated by people who are not bearing the burden of responsibility. This saddened me. Someone had advised him to say that. Someone who was well aware of the cold, inevitable wind of change. I did not pity the king, but those who will come after him as they will not have great ancestors. Will such solemn demonstrations change anything? Next time a desperate soul decides to stone a public officer for observing the law, will they remember their presence at this march? Will a starving man feed himself on the memories of Jacques Guillaume Simoneau, mayor of Toms? I would rather not be nearby to witness that. No, I think it's better to not to. Like I said. Oh no, the revolution. Uh, 
Uh, I think I'm gonna die by the revolutionists. Oh. Your son is rather good with the viola. He's both talented and enthusiastic. I would prefer that he was as enthusiastic about the law books I give him. Maybe his destiny is to become an artist, not a lawyer. Mother likes to hear me playing, and there is nothing more boring than law. See, he would rather let his career rely on the humors of the people. There are many ways to rescue France. Believe me, our country desperately needs something to ennoble it. The power is in the hands of simple, illiterate people. Let him rescue their souls with music. That is better than boring laws and clauses. See what you're doing. You're spoiling my child. I do not have my own children to spoil, so I am focusing on yours. Speaking of which... Oh, no, no, no. Okay, so now I have the possibility to spend some time with my family. So, playtime with the children. Really? My wife wouldn't like to play with me that I would play with my children? Reading together would make my son hate me. My oldest son with the influence of... I think the revolutionaries hate me now. So I think I should do something that my older son likes. Uh, probably not that, because I don't want my wife to hate me as well. And an evening stroll. Everyone would like that except my father, but my father thinks highly of me anyway, because I'm a good judge, I guess, judging on the p for the people. You take your family for an evening stroll around Paris. It will let your father stretch his old bones a little. Well... Oh, he doesn't like that, I guess. <laughs> I think I'm gonna do this, because even though my father doesn't like it, he should stretch his old bones. I'm gonna go for a stroll. Everyone likes strollers here. Whoa! He hates it really much. Father seems to he seems to hate strolling really much. Sorry, Dad. But I need my son's revolutionary thing. That is our new symbol of freedom. You can still smell the fresh wood. Do you feel free looking at it? Individuals like us do not need symbols, but France does. Did you hear the news of the day? People are running around like headless chickens, and yelling about Louis and his entourage escaping Paris. So, we will not be enjoying the aroma of fresh wood for long. Monuments like that are not installed solely for the purpose of punishing thieves or lesser aristocrats. Do you think it wants to taste royal blood? Louis' flight was a stupid move, yet it seems it was planned. One of us will sacrifice him. That is, if they catch him. Is that why Louis visited us at the court? To manipulate us? Maybe deep in his heart he felt what the builders of the guillotine did. That someone has to be exposed as a traitor. Even if there is none. Ooh, so I guess this is the introduction of the guillotine then. Welcome, Citizen Fidel. My name is Antoine Quentin Fouquier de Tinville. I am the public prosecutor that has been assigned to assist at every tribunal trial starting from today. I should warn you that I am uncompromising, although I hope that we quickly find common ground. In happier news, the construction of the guillotine has been finished. We may begin using it today. Yes, we have seen it. The king is gone. Treason. Anyone with information about his whereabouts should immediately disclose it to the authorities. Robespierre. Okay, so the king fled, it seems. We saw him yesterday. Oh, wow. Now we can sentence people to death. Great. Great, great, great. Ooh, I'm a man of the people. Yes, I am. I'm proud of that. So we should set him free, I guess, to make everyone happy. That's really great. Oh, oh no, I hope. Oh no, I guess he's guilty. Crap. 
Wait, I think this is not to begin with. Yes. Jean Hibert, the famous street urchin who killed the governor of the Bastille de Launay and carried his head on a pike, has recently been detained. After the triumph of the revolution, he reached the nadir of his life. Though many people still consider him a hero, they do not care that the Parisian archives are filled with complaints about thefts, robberies and assaults on women. Oh no. <laughs> no. Really? I have to set him free now? I think I have to. If not, I'm gonna be killed. No, I'm not gonna be killed. I'm gonna be fired. <sighs> the current case is much graver as Iber is accused of raping 16 year old Elodie de Pontalba. The charges were brought by the victim's father, Baron Thomas de Pontalba. It is widely known that de Pontalba was a relative and friend of the governor de Launay. The crime allegedly took place in the tenement belonging to the victim's family. Jean was detained by people working outside while trying to escape the building. Elodie gave a written statement saying that the incident took place on a holiday and Jean used the absence of the Baron and most of the servants to break into the tenement. Once he was inside, he entered her room and raped her. Oh no! No! Ah! I hate this game. <laughs> The incident was witnessed by Anne Michelle, Elodie's governess. It was she who alarmed the workers about disturbing noises coming from her charger's room. A number of witnesses felt obligated to inform us that Anne Michelle is known for her psychotic jealousy and her numerous romances with the people of France. Okay. Um, great. On Michelle's testimony, usually in the mornings Miss Elodie and I read, however the chef had that day off so I was preparing tea. Then I heard her screaming. I ran to her room but stopped when I heard a male voice. I was scared and asked for help. The results of the medical examination. The examination revealed the following. Defloration, minor attrition of the genital area, bruising and hemorrhaging of the arm, spine and face. Dr. P. G. B. A. No, he did it. Really? Oh, We have to set him free now, right? I can't do that. There's nothing. No, wait. It was in our diary. I can't set him free. I can't let him go. He was guilty. I was guilty. He is guilty. He deserves to die. I am so unhappy right now. Because I really think I'm going to be fired if I am. Um, if I'm not going to let him free, people will hate. It. People will hate me. I hate this game so much. <laughs> no, why? Why? Ah. Okay. Well, then let's just link it up. So. So the offender's personality is, I guess, that he's a famous defendant. The multiple complaints definitely won't be the extenuating circumstances, but I guess they are. Famous defendant. Mm -hmm. I guess the motive could be that, that they were relatives of, of the governor that he killed. Guess that could have been the motive, right? Yeah, that was the motive. So the accusation is rape. The method was breaking in, I guess. Oh wait, there's one There's one trap, so I gotta be careful. I guess the multiple complaints don't fit anywhere, but LOD is probably the testimony. No. Is she the trap? So, is the break-in at the tenement the method or is it the accusation? I guess it was the method, right? Yes. I guess rape is the method as well. No, it's not. I, oh, I already did that. Oh, the multiple complaints could be the offender's personality. Was rape the testimony? No, the testimony was not. The testimony... The only testimony that we have is the one from, from her governess and from the doctor. She didn't m make a testimony already. 
I guess the multiple complaints could belong to the offender's personality. Yes, okay. So there's one trap and I think it's the Pontalva's house. Because this doesn't belong to the accusation nor to a testimony. I guess rape can only be a testimony then. Yeah. So what is her... So is it like accusation? Like Elodie is accusing him? I guess. Yes. Okay. Oh no. I oh, I want to put them on a guillotine. They're bringing in Jean. We're with you, Jean. No. No, please don't be. Why? Please introduce yourself. Jean Hibert, the conqueror of the Bastille and vanquisher of the tyrant de Launay, the hero of all Parisians. Jean Hibert, you are accused of raping Miss Elodie de Pontalba, daughter of Baron Thomas de Pontalba. Do you plead guilty? I don't plead anything. The bourgeois and her counter-revolutionary father are filthy liars. We need to bear in mind the possibility of criminal collusion in the charges. That's right, those rich swines loved their machinations. She's just a girl. The evidence speaks against you. Girlish duplicity and the Pontalba's plots prove nothing. Uh, he still deserves all the questions, though. Did you know that Baron de Pontalba is a relative of the deceased governor de Launay? No, but that explains a lot. The whole case was conjured up by de Pontalba. He wants to get rid of me because I freed France from a tyrant. De Launay's family should have been executed a long time ago. So you would not call rape an instrument in the war against the monarchists? Monarchists should be decapitated and their daughters should be thanking the heroes of the revolution. That's right. Silence. We are talking about a young girl who was raped. Yeah, that's true. Do you find a particular pleasure in the abuse of women? Why would I abuse women when there are nicer things to do with them? Well, unless they like it. Oh, you're such a creep. Are you suggesting that the victim wanted to get raped and beaten? I didn't force her to do anything and I definitely didn't beat her. Whoa. The medical examination proves clearly that she was injured. Better ask the Pontalba who battered her. He was furious when he found out who was in bed with his sweet daughter. Are you suggesting are you suggesting that he assaulted his daughter because she consorted with you? It wouldn't surprise me. Aristocrats do worse things than beating their own children. Okay. Oh, I have to no. Mm. I have to let him go. I have to oh, Please forgive me. <laughs> I have to make the jury like him. I can't ask him all the questions. I have to let him free and I have to... <sighs> How did you break into the tenement belonging to Baron de Pontalba? Why would I break in? I used the back door. How did you know about the entrance? The Baron's daughter told me. She also informed me that her beloved father and most of the servants wouldn't be at home. She told you to visit her for that specific purpose. She was giving very clear signs. No. All aristocrats are whores. Are you saying that you came to Baron de Pontalba's house at the invitation of the victim? That young bitch promised me a nice afternoon. She explained everything in detail. Let John go. Quiet, people. The judge is beginning to understand. Remain calm and he will soon let me go. I'm so sorry. I really don't want to do this. <laughs> At first, I thought I wanted to do like a run where I would have a clean conscience and make all the right decisions. And I think I made this until now because if I do, if I follow what I want to do now, I think this will be game over. And I don't know why and I don't know where I would have to start again if I would have to start all over. That's not what I want. I think I want to live. I don't want to... I can't let him go. Oh, he's such a... Oh. I mean, 
If you look at it from this angle, he does look innocent, but there is so much that I don't know. Uh, let's hear her. Call in Anne Michelle as a witness. Citizen, what is your name? Anne Michelle, Miss Elodie de Pontalbas, governess. What do you know about the case? Hibert is guilty and should be killed. He used our relationship to get closer to the Baron's daughter and hurt her. What do you mean? He knew exactly when the servants had a day off and when the Baron left for the legislative assembly. How did he know that? Did she really tell him? Did he learn those facts from you? Not directly. He paid me several visits at the Bar at Baron de Pontalba's house. <gasps> she gave it away. Did it not occur to you that he may use his knowledge against the Baron's family? I see. Did the Baron know about your meetings? No, the Baron had more important things to worry about than the, se than the personal lives of his servants. Oh, no. Why did you neglect your duties and stop looking after the victim? That day, the Baron ordered me to take care of the house. Miss Elodie didn't have any classes and was spending time in her room. And you did not hear the accused entering the building? No, I was busy in the kitchen. I wasn't alerted until I heard sounds of a struggle and Miss Elodie's screams coming from her room. I find it baffling that you did not hear anything before then. I can't explain that, but I was making a lot of noise while cooking. Is watching the house not one of your responsibilities? Well, yes, but I can't be in two places at once. <sighs> so she gave that guy the information that, they would, that there wouldn't be a lot of people in here. Did she turn a blind eye on him entering? Did she really didn't hear it? Maybe she just thought that he would rob the house, that he would take some stuff and not rape her. Oh no. Okay, I think he's good to go now. I don't want to even hear. You have to know that I'm in a real struggle here. I am so sorry. I I can't. I can't ask any more questions because I would feel even worse that I have to let him go free now. I have the jury of where I want it now. I can set him free. I don't want to. I really don't want to. But I have to because I think if I if if I punish him now, it will be game over. The great the good thing is that no one will hate me for it if I let him free, but I hate myself. I hate myself really much right now. I am not the judge that I wanted to be in the beginning, but I think I have to do it. And I think this is what, what everyone warned me about the game, that it is horrible and I hate it. And I'm so sorry. I feel really bad. I feel really bad that I have to let him go now, just for political reasons. I would so much love him for... I would so much love to give him the death penalty right now, but... I have to let him go. I have to let him go and... So... Everyone... Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is not my opinion. I want him... I, I would have loved to give him the death penalty. But... No. I have to let him go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, 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 I'm sorry. I will keep apologizing while signing this, but I'm sorry, 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 I'm sorry. I don't even want to talk to him. Okay, so now I have to write a report. Did the defendant confess to the crime? Well, I... no? No, because he said that he didn't rape her. No, he didn't. Was his act counter-revolutionary in nature? I guess not. Not as he puts it, no. Because he says that he didn't know who she was, that she was a relative. So I guess no. How did the defendant explain signs of assault on the victim's body? Her father. Did the defendant attempt to explain the background of the rape? He said it was the victim. Oh, 
god. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <sighs> this is horrible. <laughs> the judgment for Jean Hibert is not guilty. Take the defendant away. Yeah, please. Put him away. I must admit that his guilt was not clearly confirmed. Yeah, I know that. I'm sorry. I don't want to die. Bravo. This is the France we fought for when storming the Bastille. I feel bad. I really feel bad. The judge is one of us. I hope so. Who? I'm a local hero for the common folk now, and the revolutionaries don't hate me. Yes. Ooh, I made a good job. I lost nothing but my the own respect that I carry for myself. It was a very emotional case, and I think that was very well planned to to like question the, the player's boundaries and moral and I was I'm really suffering right now. I feel so bad. I feel so 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 bad. <laughs> it's been a long day and I'm gonna take we're gonna take a quick break before going home. <sighs> Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.